This story starts with a photo. In early September, I ran up to the Isabel Glacier in the Nederland area, and when I got up to the top, I realized there wasn't a lot of seasonal snow or even really ice left. It was a lot of rock, and it didn't really look like a traditional glacier. And I got curious, is this normal? And I reached out to experts, people who study glaciers for a living here in Colorado, and they were startled by the photo, which means we were onto something. And then I posed a big question. Are Colorado's glaciers in trouble? Here's what they told me. These are iconic features that people seek out, they hike to, they're a destination. The views aren't the only unique thing about Colorado's high country. Scattered throughout the Rockies are more than a dozen glaciers. Glaciers come in a wide range of different forms. Pictures like these capture the beauty of these alpine ice formations, but comparing them to years past shows they're hardly frozen in time. I, I don't think the prognosis for Colorado glaciers is very good. I think <laughs> in a few decades they'll basically be gone. At many of these glaciers, the ice that once blanketed entire mountain faces has worn thin over time thanks to increasingly warm summers. They're, they're obviously thinning and they're retreating. That, that's concerning and we're seeing significant changes that raises concern about how much longer they'll be, uh, they'll reside in the landscape. We'll pause here to answer the question you may well be asking. Glaciers in Colorado? That's right, not all glaciers are of the Arctic variety. Many of the landscapes that we kind of have come to love in Colorado, those are all the result of glacial erosion. According to the USGS, there are 16 glaciers in Colorado. They're most often found in bowl-like valleys in the Alpine called cirques, a geological effect that helps them capture windblown snow and avalanches and protects them from direct sunlight. But the science tells us that protection isn't enough. To understand what the future might hold for Colorado's glaciers, we talked to two scientists who have spent years studying glaciers here and beyond. They tell us warmer summers are taking a toll on our glaciers. Given the increased frequency of warmer, you know, hot summers like we've been having, it won't take much to, to have a lot of thinning in a short a period of time. Really, it's been these exceptionally warm temperatures these last few summers that have led to these conditions where we have near uh, bare ice conditions over the majority of the glacier. But the bleak outlook isn't just coming from a thermometer reading. By looking at different pictures taken from satellites over time, we can see how ice on land is changing over time. To actually observe the glaciers in the field, we'll use different tools like ground penetrating radar. It basically goes down through the glacier and reflects off changes in material properties within the glacier. So we can image how thick the snowpack is, we can image how thick the glacier is. And so those are really important kind of uh, parameters that we as glaciologists need to understand glacier health. Let's take a closer look at Colorado's glaciers. This is Isabel Glacier in the Brainerd Lake area in September 2022. And this is a photo McGrath showed us of that same glacier almost exactly two years earlier. We have this, this bare ice condition, lots of debris cover on the glacier, um, and, and very little seasonal snow left uh, in this entire landscape, indicative of a, of a negative year for these glaciers, which if they occur again and again, is really quite concerning. Then there's Moomaw Glacier inside Rocky Mountain National Park. This glacier has undergone significant change and is really transitioning away from being a, a, an ice patch or perennial kind of snowfield, almost into what we call a rock glacier, or at least a debris covered glacier. Also in the park, Andrews Glacier. McGrath has studied this one for years, including a late September visit. Um, Andrews Glacier was really looking uh, rather dismal. Um, in all the years that I've been up there and all the photographs that I've seen, I've never seen the terminus as far retreated as this. It has always seemed like this relatively static feature of, of Andrews that you know, extended down to the Tarn, or at least close to the Tarn. Then there's Arapaho Glacier near Nederland, which McGrath says has thinned by more than 60 feet over the last 16 years. That's, that's really quite significant in the grand scheme of things. Arapaho um, has a lot of kind of south-facing aspects to it, and so it, it actually um, experiences really high rates of melt on, on that glacier surface. And so it's not uncommon for there to be bare ice on the glacier, yet there's portions here on the north-facing sides that almost always have snow. What we see here in 2021 and 2022 is, is widespread bare ice, more than we see in any other year. There's really no other seasonal snow left in the basin. And those are just a few of Colorado's glaciers. We have 16 total, including St. Mary's Glacier here. Now there are more than 200,000 around the world and Rob tells us all of them are shrinking. So why is it so important to monitor the ones here in Colorado? Well, interestingly enough, they can help forecast what's in store for their larger cousins down at the poles, Antarctica, Greenland, and other parts of the world. 
Another really valuable reason for studying glaciers in Colorado is they're an important analog for other portions of the planet, that, what they'll look like in the future. So if we look at Alaska um, in 50 years, 100 years, it's gonna look, you know, in many cases, like these small little glaciers that we have here in Colorado. Experts tell us glacier loss in the American West could be 50% or more by 2030. But to put the global problem into perspective, the Earth's glaciers lose 267 gigatons of ice every year. The water from that amount of melting would fill and power fuel to the brim about 100,000 times. So this all sounds bad, really bad even. But our resident glaciologists tell us it's not all doom and gloom. Because I, I see how important it is to understand how they're changing and the timeline that they're gonna change in for society. Also, I don't think it's hopeless either um, with you know, more and more electrification of our energy systems and transportation systems, I think we still have a chance to slow the change. This story started with a photo, and now it ends with some advice. Get out into Colorado's beautiful landscapes and see these glaciers for yourself while you still can. And experts stay to watch as they change over the years. Reporting for Denver 7, I'm Stephanie Butzer.